Do, 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 do. Hey. Hello and welcome to Practicality with me, John Stevenson. Thank you very much for joining me on my journey into learning more about the Closureverse. And in this episode, we're going to look at uh, unit test runners. So we looked at spec in in the last kind of episodes, last five episodes, um, and we did some testing with there. So we're kind of carrying on the testing theme. And I'll do a very, very little brief uh, recap of unit tests in Clojure. And uh, hello, Daniel, thank you very much for joining us. And if, you, um, if you've if you done unit tests before in, in whatever language, then it's pretty much the same. It's all assertion-based testing. So we'll just recap that because it's quite useful to know um, about the organization of unit tests as well. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, somebody wrote their first lines of closure last night. Excellent. Hope you have many days and nights of closure uh, as well. Okay, where are we? Let's go to the website. So as usual, everything uh, I've done so far is probably linked off the website. So there's uh, updates I'm doing for the Closure, closure is Together sponsorship, which is uh, helping me uh, do a lot more. Uh, and I've been doing some updates with the Practically Space Max book and with the Practically Closure book as well. There's quite a few new uh, sections in the Practically Closure book. And it's the book that we're going to uh, use today as the basis of uh, looking at uh, testing in Closure. So I've, I've streamlined the navigation a bit and got this testing in Closure section. Uh, and we're going to look at mainly look at test runners, but have a quick recap at unit tests as well. And if you want to get in touch, then uh, closure in Slack channel. There's a free account you can create, and then via the Practically uh, channel. Uh, although there's lots of other channels I do uh, chat on as well, and there's other ways to support me as well and keep me motivated. Thank you very much. So testing in closure. Um, so the book's going to cover quite a few different aspects of testing because it's not just unit testing, but there's also, we've looked at spec and generative testing as well. So there's a section on that, uh, still plenty of things to add there, but uh, there's a good foundation there to help you get going. Uh, there's also behavior driven development. I did do a little bit of this a few years ago and it'd be good to try and try out things like, uh, uh coucher cucumber. That's not an easy thing to say in the morning, and uh, and see how that uh, see how we get on with those kind of things. It's a it's a very interesting approach to uh, kind of more encompassing uh, testing uh, and scenario modeling as well. And then we're going to do some sections on performance testing as well. So I think simple things like time and criterion as well as doing kind of uh, like system testing with Gatling uh, and doing some really heavy load testing as well. We've done that in projects I did uh, for uh, a big financial company not so long ago. Okay, uh, unit testing. So there's closure test in, uh, it's kind of built into the core uh, closure library. So it's already there. Um, let's make that a little bit bigger. Boop. And uh, so there's basic principles. You write one test namespace for each uh, source namespace. Uh, and if you do that also, it makes it easier to, right, that's kind of the standard that the test runners are actually looking for. Um, with some, you can also configure uh, how you're actually going to do it. But most people, unless there's a real reason, you do one test uh, namespace for one source namespace. So you've got a, a kind of tree like this, you've got a source tree and a test tree, and you know, the all the tests for the code are kind of mirrored uh, down this test uh, path. And uh, as we know, that in closure, then using the, uh, the the path, the the file path is the same as the actual namespace. So the namespace for the functions inside rock paper scissors here is code was code was dot rock paper scissors. Um, so it's uh, you do the same thing for your tests as well. So it's, it's very easy to kind of know and just expect where those tests are. And then we, we use def test as the main way to define tests. And uh, usually have one def test for one function that we're testing. Uh, and so all the all the tests, all the functions that we have in rock, paper, scissors, there'd be an equivalent uh, def test for each of the defens in Code Wars. That's usually how it works. 
Uh, and then you can have, if there are as different aspects to testing a function, then you can have uh, one or more uh, is assertions, and that's like testing whether something is true or false. So you're basically making a statement by calling a function and comparing against some uh, expected data. And if it's true, you test pass. If it's not, then test fail. Uh, and then you can group up te uh, uh, tests with this testing uh, function as well, which just helps with uh, diagnosing when things are failing as well. Uh, so that's the basic proxy structure. And usually if you're creating uh, a closure projects with a template, then they're going to put things into this uh, structure. It's it's very similar. It's, it's what's used in Java and .NET, uh, especially in, let's see, Sharp. Uh, those kind of languages, and I think it, I mean, Java certainly did set, kind of set this standard, but it probably was already used in this respect in other languages even before Java. Uh, and there's uh, an example here which we'll have a look at. Uh, to let's have a look at it now, actually. So here we've got uh, source uh, code wars. So this is code wars uh, ch online challenges that we've been going through in earlier episodes. And uh, there's a source tree uh, with uh, rock, paper, scissors in there. And uh, it's got um, it's got the functions in here that we're going to test. There's a lot of, uh, there's a bit of um, uh, a bit of design journal in there as well. So it's a bit messy, but you've got like a, a rock, paper, scissors uh, function in here. And in the tests, uh, we can go back to test code wars. Then we should have some tests in here. So from code wars, it actually gives you the tests already. So it gives you def tests. So I've just copied these from code wars. And it's, uh, yeah, there you go. So we got uh, def tests. And then it's grouping uh, some tests with testing, although it's using this, um, it's using R instead of is, which means we can use the, um, a set of data rather than having multiple lines of that, uh, multiple lines of assertions that are the same. Uh, so instead of having, uh, calling rock, paper, scissors explicitly with uh, rock and then scissors, then having a, a, like two more expressions that cover it with scissors paper and paper rock we can use the r macro to basically pull in all this data and test uh, basically test this expression with with each of these pairs of data in turn that's what uh, r is doing so it's a nice way to refactor testing as well i think i've got an example of that um, there we next page yeah there we go so a simple one is to use is, uh, is something equal to, or using a predicate function, that's quite common. And then you can use R instead, if you've got uh, multiple sets of data that you want to run through pretty much the same expression. So this is the kind of expression we're doing, and we're just gonna run uh, various sets of data in there. So if you've got a lot of different kind of cases that you want to test, but they're only differing by the arguments that you're passing into a function, then R is, is a nice way to streamline it. So example is here, if we're testing this uh, uh, character sequence to word sequence using a dictionary, and then all the only difference is we're changing the uh, the arguments that we're passing here, and only, and only actually one of those arguments, um, then we can streamline that down by um, kind of, uh, yeah, comparing it uh, using R to just streamline instead of calling all of these all these functions each time, we're calling it once, but once for each of these uh, uh, sets of data. So it just makes it uh, a lot easier to write the tests. There's a lot less typing to do, uh, and also there's a lot less refactoring to do if you uh, if you change the name of your function. If you're using a different dictionary, you don't have to go and change like lots of different lines. You only need to change one. So that's quite simple. Uh, and yeah, I'll come back to that in a second. So requiring namespaces, if you're going to use that, then uh, where uh, 
we need. So if you're using closure test, then obviously you're going to require that. I recommend using uh, require uh, rather than use. And you, by referring, I always tend to refer specific uh, function names. Now the, the kind of namespace, the testing namespace is aimed at testing. So it's, it's uh, you don't, I don't really use an alias for the closure test. I just use the particular uh, function names because they are the main focus of this particular namespace. Uh, and so we're going to uh, include our def test isn't testing as if they were actually written in the kind of the, the namespace that we're actually using. So uh, this is how you do it in the REPL. Uh, you would require closure test and then the specific functions you want to use. And then you would require um, the uh, namespace that you're actually going to test. And I use the um, SUT uh, system under test alias, which is quite common for software testing. Uh, and that way you can put in SUT in front of the, 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 the names of the functions you're testing. And then it's very obvious which functions you're actually testing. So in a closure project, you'd use, rather than using a separate require statement, you just use require um, as part of the NS macro. And then you just require uh, closure tests and uh, your namespace and any other things that you actually need to include as well. Um, so if you, if you need uh, specifications, uh, then you can include those in here. So that's, uh, so including the namespace is the main thing you need to do uh, for closure uh, CLI projects. Then um, there is one little bit of configuration that you also need. Um, so if you haven't looked at that, there is some videos there on setting up closure CLI projects. It's a new approach to doing closure uh, projects uh, as an alternative to lining and boot. Uh, and so we have this uh, depths.eden file. And in that file, it's basically a configuration about how you um, yeah, how you get the dependencies and setting up the, uh, the paths that define where your source and where your tests are. And when you're developing, you want to include the test path, but when you're pushing uh, code into production, you don't really want to include the tests in the deployed application. So we keep those separate. So the paths is the kind of the, the directories that are going to be included regardless uh, of whether you're doing development or deploying into production. And then you can have an alias that adds the extra test path in here. So I've got a specific alias that adds that. Um, or you can include that into the uh, test runner itself. So I've got this practically closure depths Eden file, uh, file which is uh, a repository with a depths Eden file in there. Uh, and that's basically what I use for my, uh, um, for all my projects is like the, the baseline uh, configuration for all my projects. And if I want to do something specific just in that one project, I'll do, uh, I'll do some configuration in specifically in that projects um, uh, depths Eden file. And so if we have a look at that repository, um, so I do recommend kind of using the, you can fork this repository and clone your own fork and use that. That's probably the most effective way. Then you can add your own, uh, tweaks and changes to that, but it sets you up with a whole bunch of aliases here. So you can kind of update, uh, dependencies. You can go in and create new projects. You can run uh, different REPL experiences. You can have data browsers. Uh, you can kind of access uh, different uh, versions of Java source uh, testing frameworks. And then we've got test runners, which is what we're going to look at today. So there's quite a few test runners that uh, I've come up with. Uh, and there's also bat test, which I've just found recently. But these are the kind of the, these seem to be in terms of closure uh, depths.eden projects. These seem to be the more common um, uh, test runners, so the Cognitech Labs one, uh, the uh, Closure Script test runner, which is kind of like inspired by the Cognitech Labs one, that's by Oli Cal. 
and Coacha, which is the kind of like the uh, the all singing, all singing, all dancing, the the fully featured unit testing. So these two are quite uh, aimed to be quite simple and easy to use. And um, Coacha is aimed at kind of being the only test tool you'll ever need um, and be able to test pretty much every project out there because it's a, it has a lot more features and it's a lot more, uh, you can configure it to uh, run a, a wide range of projects. And there's a whole bunch of other uh, aliases there as well you can use. So if we have a look at the depths.in file, uh, Let's jump to here. Uh, so we're just including these test runners, uh, and you can you don't have to use the depths this depths to Eden one. You can just include this in your depths to Eden file uh, for your project or your own uh, dot closure depths to Eden file. Um, but these this is how you do it, and you can you can use your own names. But these are kind of suggested names I've got here that um, kind of for consistency. And we're basically pulling in uh, the dependency. In this case, it's a Git dependency because it's still quite uh, an active project. Um, we're not pulling out a Maven library like we are with uh, Test Runner, CLGS Test Runner. It's using a Maven repository that's either deployed on uh, Maven Central or Clojars. Um, this one is it's the same same idea. We're getting an extra dependency that we're only going to use when we use this alias. And uh, and then it's also setting the test path as well. So I've got all these uh, all the test runners to have test path because it doesn't actually matter if we set this twice. Um, that's fine. Um, uh, so those are the kind of the options there. We're not going to look at CLGS because I'm just going to look at closure projects this time. Uh, and there are some other things like Midge was quite popular. Midge is kind of like an extension to closure test. Uh, it defines the tests slightly differently. It's a kind of semi BDD framework. And then there's EF test, which is just a, a, a really nice fast uh, test runner. But uh, I think this is done before the Cognitep Labs one. I think Cognitep Labs is the one I'm kind of mainly using. Uh, and then I'm starting to learn uh, Coacher as I learn how to pronounce it. Okay. Um, So that's a brief overview on testing. Uh, so let's look at the test runners themselves. Uh, so the first question, I guess, and I've covered this, touched on this already a little bit, is which test runner do you actually use? So test runner is going to run either one of our tests or all of our tests or specific tests. So you usually can be kind of focused on uh, 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 you can decide how many tests are actually going to run. Obviously, the bigger your project gets, the more tests you're going to have. Uh, and we'll see how to categorize those tests as well. And you want to be able to have those tests running as quickly as possible, and you want to have the setup as easy as possible, really. Uh, so there's no kind of barrier to running the tests and running the tests as often as possible. And sometimes you can set up like a, a watcher that will automatically run the tests for you whenever you change those as well. Uh, one thing to be aware of, if you're going to run tests, then your code needs to compile <laughs> and uh, it needs to actually work. Uh, if you've got uh, code that doesn't work, then comment it out with uh, the colons uh, and uh, uh, or delete it if you really, if you don't want it anymore. You can also use comment blocks for code that works, but you don't actually want to run as part of the tests. So if you've got kind of like a design journal, um, or if you're just doing a little bit of REPL experimentation, uh, then like comment out those. Uh, I'll put them in. Yeah, put them in a comment block or use a reader macro comment, uh, and that way you can still evaluate them in your editor. Uh, but when you run the tests, the, the tests are not going to run these extra uh, REPL experiments um, while, you, while it's running the tests. Uh, so, yeah, I mentioned there's these kind of like the, the main ones I think people are using, but it'd be interesting to know what other people are, are using as well. Um, 
for especially for closure depth projects. Uh, uh, and so, uh, yeah, I'm using the Cognitech Labs test runner a lot. It's very simple, straightforward. Uh, and if you're using the uh, the CLJ new um, uh, to create projects, then it's added it for you. So if you um, if you did create a project with Closure and using the CLJ new alias, uh, you just specify a template, and all those templates include. Uh, so if you do like the uh, app template or the lib template, those include the Cognitech runner already. Um, and then if you uh, if you want to do some, if you've got a aligning a project, uh, but you want to kind of slowly move over to closure CLI tools, then Coucher is a, is a good choice there as well. Or if you've just got, you want to do some something more than just the standard stuff, then Coucher is definitely worth getting into. Or if you've got a mixture of closure and closure scripts and a few other things as well. Um, or if you just want more features that um, the Cognitech uh, Labs are really not giving you, then uh, Coucher is a really good option as well. And if you're a development team and you just want to settle on one particular test runner, then Couch is probably uh, a very good choice there as well because it'll uh, it'll support all of the projects that you're working on. So let's have a look at Cognitech Labs. Any questions so far? Feel free to put uh, any questions on there. If I've missed things that uh, are not clear, let me know. So, yeah, we've seen the configuration. It's pretty standard. Um, uh, this hasn't been updated. So we're using a basically a particular GitHub. Uh, so git commit, this is a GitHub project, uh, which is the, the source of all the source code. And we're just saying, use this particular commit. Uh, and uh, and then basically the uh, closure uh, CLI tool will just download this and compile it and you'll have a library there and we're setting the main uh, works uh, namespace to Cognitech test runner so it's going to run it's going to go into there and run the uh, the main function from that so go in and see if we go to the websites if you're going to look at the source so oh, it's got some tests in there as well so this is the uh, the project. So it's going to download all download all this, and it's going to when we set the main space uh, set the main space, it's going to come in and run the main function from that whenever we run uh, the C uh, closure on the command line. Uh, and so basically, it's running this app this test tool for us, um, and that's that's all there is to it. Really. So there isn't really a huge amount of stuff to do if you're tests are in the test directory and sources in source directory and you prepend the uh, names of your tests with dash test then this will just work um, you do need to make sure you include that extra path test as well otherwise uh, it's not going to find them and so then we just uh, invoke the uh, test runner by including the alias so you can use either CLJ or Clojure. In this case, it doesn't really matter because we're not actually running a REPL, we're just running the uh, Clojure command line. And uh, yeah, and so, yeah, here I'm also including the, explicitly including the test path. So it doesn't actually matter if you uh, do that. I didn't need to include that there. Um, and there are some options there we'll have a look at. I don't think I actually use them. So if you've got, uh, yeah, if you want to specify a different name for your tests, uh, a different directory for your tests, do that. I don't really do that, but that would help if you've got some non-standard kind of directory structure uh, for your tests, then uh, you can specify that as well. Um, and we'll have a look at the uh, include and exclude. Uh, I, I use them a little bit, they're quite handy. So let's have a look at it running in action. So I've got some projects here. If you go to the 
uh, before I look at that, there's example projects here uh, where I've got some example projects that are available on GitHub that you can have an experiment with if you don't have any projects that uh, have tests in. And uh, so I've got some already downloaded. So what do we got? So let's do let's do Kata recent songs lists. Which one is this? This this is a oh that's a depths project one. Uh, yeah. Um, so closure. Oops, can't type. Uh, this one I did earlier. So this is a, um, I've got a project.clj file, but I've also got a depths Eden file as well. Um, and so uh, it'll kind of look at the depths Eden file uh, to see if there's any other additional configuration. Uh, let's just look at the depths file. Uh, and all it's got is just the a path of source. So this is just adding source to everything that's already in the, um, the oops, dollar, dollar. yeah there we go so this is the closure.depth eden file this is the configuration file for all of my projects basically for my uh, user account so this will be the base configuration that is used and then anything that's in the local depths will uh, add to that or overwrite that except for the paths the paths is uh, is just um, uh, overridden i think so here I've just got all the aliases. I don't actually specify a, a path thing for there. Uh, but it works. I run uh, Cognitech Test Runner and it's uh, running uh, the tests in the test directory and it's testing this namespace. That's what my main namespace is called. There's only one namespace in this. And it's running the four tests uh, and it's got nine assertions and they all pass. Woohoo! That's nice. Uh, so let's have a look at. Did I have. Oh, which one was that one? Uh, oops. Three, two. So that was recent song list. Uh, oh, I didn't save it. Uh, so let's have a look at that. It's projects, closure. Uh, unit test uh, kata uh, boom, boom, boom. Uh, test boom. Uh, so it's very simple um, from the project template it creates the as an example dev test which is still in here just to uh, uh, show you uh, and it starts off with a failing test as well so I think it starts off as something like uh, that so you can check that your test runner is actually running so if we go back and actually run the test now uh, then uh, it should f have one failure there we go we've got one failure so it's run it's still running for tests it's running nine sessions but one we've got one failure and no errors and it's showing me when it's failing that uh, it's failing in a test that's the name of the test uh, and the namespace and the file it's in is core test which is right um, and uh, i think that's from the testing uh, section so it's kind of giving you a documentation of which uh, which part of that uh, dev test it's failing on and it's showing you what it's expected and what it's what it's actually getting so it's uh, it's expecting uh, zero and one to be equal but it's not equal um, let me look at look at uh, oh, I'm one So you see that it's got the testing fix me I fail. That's the that's, so it's giving us extra information about where uh, the um, uh, the test wh which part of this uh, def test is failing. There's only one testing uh, expression in this def test, so it's pretty obvious where it's going to be. But there may be multiple testings in there as well. There may be multiple assertions, so it helps narrow down having like a, a meaningful. Uh, description in here kind of helps narrow down uh, where the, the actual error is 
So if I change that, how many have we got there? Are we testing total volume. Oh, this is a. Um, I just change that. Um, so if you run it again, then it's showing. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That didn't fail. Uh, I'm obviously not checking very cleverly, carefully what that's doing. Uh, interesting. Um, let's save that. Let's try it again. Hmm. Very strange. I should have failed, but never mind. <laughs> Why is it not? Oh, did I? Ah, uh, uh, boom, boom. Um, let's try a different one. I think it was. It's been nearly three years since I did this project, so I've forgotten how it works. Um. Oh, I, I know what I can do. Well, maybe the tests are just not as good as I thought they were. Um, oh, there we go. That's it. I knew I can make it fail <laughs> eventually. So this is the same. Uh, the same namespace we're testing, we still do it testing in the test directory. Um, and it's telling us uh, the uh, name of the function. Uh, and it's, uh, that's the file name. And this is, yeah, so this is the description of where it's failing. So it helps it narrow down um, where that's failing because uh, it matches up with uh, the uh, the string that we're putting into the testing uh, section here. So it's so in this def test, uh, there's quite a few. There's like one, two, three. Oh, there's one, two, three in this def test here. Sorry, there's one, two, three, four uh, different sections of our test, and it's obviously it's helping the output's helping us narrow down to uh, a specific area as well. So. That's quite useful, even though this is quite a simple tool, it's giving us pretty much all the all the core functionality we actually need uh, for running our tests. And some of the other things that are quite interesting to do, you can also uh, do categorization for uh, tests as well. Um, uh, and you can also specify like multiple um, like directories in here as well. So all these Additional command lines are uh, kind of uh, cumulative, so you can kind of add multiple uh, flags on there, and it will add to uh, what it's doing. So here we've got uh, uh, a couple of uh, namespaces testing. So we're selectively going to test just uh, two specific namespaces, um, and uh, rather than kind of chain them together, you just put the uh, the extra. Um, flag for uh, the namespace, which is minus n. And we can do the same thing for categorization of tests. So when we're defining a test, then we can basically do a def test, but add uh, a little bit of metadata to the def test. And it will um, basically set up, set up whatever categorization we want in here. So you can use whatever uh, kind of namespace, whatever names you want in here. So we're just using this integration keyword as our metadata and um, it's basically saying that this testing live system which is a terrible name for a dev test uh, is uh, is part of the integration suite of tests that we're going to use so then we can just run specific integration tests uh, and uh, and kind of rather than other tests in there as well uh, or we can uh, we can also go in and exclude uh, integration tests and uh, so if we're just doing development and we uh, just want to run the kind of the the quick development tests we've got uh, then we can exclude integration which tend to be kind of 
longer running tests because they're using a lot more data and, and doing all this kind of system integration. They might be doing more setup and teardown of systems as well. So the integration tests might take sort of an order of magnitude longer. So you can decide when uh, to include them as well. And if you want multiple categories of these dev tests, then you can just uh, specify which of those ones you want to include and which ones to exclude as well. Um, and just take note that if you're going to use exclude, exclusions will take priority over inclusion. So if you include something uh, and then you exclude it, then it'll be ex excluded. And uh, again, when I was working uh, on a large project at a financial institute, institution, uh, then we had things like develop integration, data loading, data migration, pre-production, kind of all these different categories of uh, tests. And that did help us kind of streamline the testing process. We, uh, the system was pushing through an awful lot of data, uh, so like something like, uh, like up to like 10 million records a day that it was supposed to handle. So we did uh, quite a lot of load testing on that to try and make sure that uh, it was going to work uh, sufficiently before we deployed it into production. Okay, uh, so that is uh, coding text test lab runner. So if you're just starting then uh, and you're using closure.depths.eden uh, uh, projects, then I think it's a great uh, tool to use. Um, it works, it's really fast, and it's nice and simple. And um, I, uh, I don't think. Oh, yeah, I did do. Um, yeah. I did do an example uh, project. It's not a very good example. Uh, uh, is it. Um, Oops, I've cancelled it. Yeah, there's a, I've got an example of a project where I categorize tests as well. I'll expand on that and, and add that to the, um, the list of projects I've got uh, in example projects. Um, and so if, you, um, if you're going to do a lot of projects, a lot of different projects, you've got a mixture of lining and, and depth Eden and maybe even boot projects as well, then capture. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. There is a, a link on how to pronounce it on the website. Uh, that's, that's as close as I've got so far. Uh, again, this is a test runner, but it's it's quite different from uh, pretty much all uh, of the other test runners you can get out there because it's, it's trying to have this tool agnostic approach. This does mean there's a little bit of configuration uh, going up there, but it's, it's fairly simple stuff and there's lots of defaults there from which to build on. So the learning curve is is kind of almost uh, nil, whereas the um, Cognitex Lab uh, runner is pretty much absolutely nil. Uh, but there's not much difference. The main difference is that you're going to have this um, uh, uh, test.eden file uh, as, as well to define where your tests are and define what's, what's actually going on. So just like the Cognitex Labs, uh, test runner then we uh, we added a dependency uh, for culture and so I've just added an alias to the closure.depths.eden file again that's in my as we've seen that's in my depths.eden uh, repository and so we're just including this uh, lambda island uh, library and I think that's the latest version uh, and then we're just calling uh, setting the namespace uh, to capture runner and that will go off and then look in the dash, look for the dash main uh, function and then basically run uh, capture. And that will go and look up uh, the uh, configuration for the tests. And capture also recommends is creating this bin capture script, which I wasn't sure about at first, but I can see, I can see how it's useful now because uh, capture builds uh, its configuration from whatever you specify on the command line plus, uh, plus the test.eden uh, file. So you can just create a normal kind of bash script. So just create a, um, a bin uh, capture file. So I've got this in my 
uh, in my local kind of user bin. Uh, oops, sorry, that's the wrong bin. So in uh, tilde slash bin capture. Uh, let's have a look at this. What did I put in here? Uh, so just basically got a script. Yeah, so it's basically calling. Uh, so it's basically calling closure, and it's uh, with the alias of test runner capture, which is what I've got in my dot uh, closure depths .eden file, and the um, the dollar amp sand is basically just taking all the arguments and passing them into uh, uh, the uh, uh, capture uh, as it runs. Uh, so, um, so this is just a general one. So this will work in all projects because it's in my um, kind of bin uh, directory, and this is on my uh, system path. Uh, so I can just type in uh, if I can get the name right. I can just type in Coucher, and it will um, run that anywhere. And if the project is set up uh, in a standard way, then it will run the test for me oh there we go oh nice oh this is working better cool um oh yeah so this is and this also gives a slightly nicer output to the test as well so it's uh, it's showing me that um uh where i've got a failure in here so it's using these dots these dots are kind of the um the tests that we're running uh and we're running it and the F shows that one of the tests has failed. So if it's, a, if it's just a dot, then it's passed. And uh, it's running in the core test. And then it's running the recently added song first test uh, from this uh, file at, at line 56. This is where the failure is. And this is the uh, output from the testing uh, expression. And it's expected uh, Daft Punk get lucky. Uh, but it's actually got uh, Farrell Williams happy. Um, and it's still got the, the summary that is there as well. So it adds a little bit extra uh, in the, the formatting of things, as do a few of the other test runners. Uh, so if that's important, that's one additional reason to uh, use Coucher. And I actually, did I do anything? See, I didn't actually add a test dot uh, eden file in here uh, but because i'm using a fairly standard uh, structure it's kind of just got got it right because the source and the test things are just there in the right place um, however that might not be the case on all projects so having a test dot eden file is make sure that everything is uh, configured where it should be and if you've got things in a different place then obviously the test.eden file that we'll look at in a minute will uh, make sure that Coucher is looking in the right place. And so this is using the... oh that's interesting. Uh, yes, so you see that the F has moved now. Ooh. Uh, and so if you run it a few times, if I run this again, um, the F will probably be in a different place. So I've got one failing test, but it's moving. Uh, and this is, uh, this is alluding to the fact that um, we've got this randomization. So another interesting feature of uh, Coucher is it, it, you, it runs the tests in a random order uh, using a particular seed and uh, and that can be set so you can also switch that off as well uh, so you can run tests in the same order over and over again uh, it's just a configuration setting uh, but the advantage of running tests in a random order is that if tests depend upon each other then um, there is a potential for a, a test passing or failing because of what's happened in a previous test whereas if you do them uh, randomly then you can kind of it's you're more likely to catch uh, accidental um, interdependencies between uh, your unit tests as well cool boom, boom, boom. Oops. that's the wrong screen I'm clicking on there we go uh, so with the 
with the alias in the depths.eden file. Uh, and so you can actually put this in the closure.depths.eden file, or you can put it in the local project depths.eden file. Uh, either way, it's the same, it's the same piece of code. Again, you can choose to call it coucher or something as well. Yeah, the randomness does make an awful lot of difference, I think. Although it might cut you out if you've uh, if you've got an existing project and you suddenly you switched over to Coucher and things start massively failing because you realize that lots of tests depend on other tests. You may have to switch the randomization off initially and then start fixing your uh, tests as well. So it's not going to, it, it shouldn't stop you running tests, but it should highlight that they're there may be something that you need to look at uh, in respect to your test that you've created. Um, so that's how you get started. So that's basically the install. Uh, and there is uh, this test.eden file you can create. And especially if you go to um, uh, kind of have like a mixed project, it's worth creating a test.eden file. And you can put all the command line options in there. Um, so you can configure everything you can do on the command line. You can kind of put in as a configuration option as well, I think. And uh, we just create this test.eden file in the um, uh, in the root of our project directory. And it's quite simple because all you need to do really is uh, create a, a file with uh, an empty map, but it's it's got this uh, label on it that actually sets up a whole bunch of uh, defaults, so basically categorizing uh, Coucher. It's going to use a Coucher version one set of configurations. And so if you just add this one line into your test.in file, then you get uh, a bunch of specific configurations uh, for that project. Uh, and then if you want to customize something, then it's useful to go off and then so print this configuration out and then go and see what you actually want to change. So that's a good way to actually get started with uh, Coucher. Um, although on all the projects I've tried so far, I haven't actually needed to change anything yet. Um, again, all my projects, I think, are using a standard like source and uh, separate source and test directory. So this, uh, so let's go in and change. Oh, we're running out of time a little bit. Oh, um, so this Coucher version one um, is is kind of the same approach uh, as uh, and and that's actually Coucher is actually using this library called Arrow uh, to to read the configuration, and so th using these like reader literals, you can actually um, in Aero, I've used this to uh, basically set up uh, a configuration that is a single configuration file. Uh, so we've just got this config.eden file, which is a configuration for all, for the entire project uh, and for different environments. So we use the same configuration file, whether we're doing development, whether we're doing testing, uh, doing production uh, and so on and so on because we can use Aero to define a profile uh, and say which of these things we actually want to use. So if we set up, we read the config in, but with respect to a profile that's set to prod for production, then it will it will basically go and look at our big configuration file uh, and say, okay, for the database, oh, I, I've got a few options. I'll use the one that's the pro, set to the profile uh, prod, which is what it's in, is how I'm being asked to read the file. And, and so then it will use this version of uh, Datomic database rather than the test one or, or the default one we use for, um, uh, for development. So that way you can have a single configuration file, uh, that's useful for all the environments that you're actually working with. And you do the same thing. It's the same sort of, uh, uh, syntax is used for the capture uh, uh, test.eden file. Uh, and also error is a really good uh, library to use for your general configuration of your project as well. So if you want to configure your application uh, for different uh, environments, then I do recommend using uh, Aero. 
Uh, so we see we run tests with capture. It's very straightforward. And we get um, an output there of the different um, uh, there and showing you what's failing and what's passing. Uh, you can also do uh, like a progress report. So if you if you've got longer running tests, then if you do the this reporter plugin, then it will actually kind of show you the uh, progress. So it's actually showing the progress of your um, uh, uh, your running tests as well. And if you've got a lot of tests, you might not want to run them all. If one of them fails, uh, then you might want to just uh, stop running all the tests, especially if you're doing larger set of integration tests. Um, then having this fail fast option in here as well would be really useful to um, kind of minimize running tests when you don't need to. Um, and so, so this will fail on the first test. So the, the, run, the test runner will stop as soon as it finds the test that fails uh, and obviously show you what, which test has failed. So you can go in and fix that one and then you can run that. And when you actually rerun it, it will actually go and test the, uh, the test that's failed first, uh, and then run, start running all the tests as well. So if you haven't fixed it, the test that fails rather than randomizing it all and sticking it like somewhere towards the end, it's going to run that fast, uh, that, that failed um, test first. And that way you, you're, if you didn't fix it, then you you it saves you an awful lot of time. Um, uh, as I mentioned, there's a no randomized flag as well. Uh, the print results, I did this and that's prints out, um, an awful lot of results. It's too too many. I think that's. I haven't quite worked out how you why you would use this. I think it's more for kind of detail output for diagnostic tools or viewing in some kind of data browser because it does it does produce this really really huge kind of uh, list of configuration. I think it does a configuration for every test, uh, so you kind of see lots of details. So it's quite useful for diagnosing and it's probably useful for plugin development as well. Um, but it's, if you're just running tests in development, then it's, it's probably not an option you want to use. Um, and then we've got the watch flag as well. So if you want, if you're on the watch flag, then you can, uh, basically, uh, if you change your files, either in the source or test path, then it's going to reload those and run the tests again. Um, I'm not quite sure if it runs the test that's just changed or not. Uh, that's something I want to look into. Uh, it might do. It wouldn't surprise me if it does. Um, and then there's a bunch of plugins. Uh, so there's um, things like profiling as well. Um, so it can show you what are the slow tests. So I started playing around with uh, this just this morning. Um, we go to user manager. So user manager uh, example is a, is a nice little project from uh, Sean Caulfield. I've got a link in there in the example projects. Um, so it's it's basically a nice example of using uh, it's like security for like setting up user management uh, application. And it's got uh, some tests. Uh, it's a closure uh, depths.eden file uh, project. And so it's also got the uh, Cognitech Labs test runner in there as well. So you can just do a like, test runner. So test alias in the local project depths even file is uh, basically just adding the test path and then runner calls the uh, Cognitech Lab uh, tool. Uh, so it's using that and um, oops. let me uh, look at that project. Uh, so it's a depths of Eden file. We've got a test Eden file in there as well. Did I create that? I can't remember if I create that now. Uh, oh yes, I think I might have created that. Yes. Uh, Eden file. Oh yes. Uh, so I created this, uh, and I've added the uh, I did the plugins profiling to this as well. Um, although I found that it actually fails when I do that for some reason. So if I do, um, I think I did, yeah, and I did a bin, uh, coacher, uh, coucher, um, 
the file. So this is the example of adding um, a local Coucher executable to the project. Uh, and so basically I'm just running this with an extra um, uh, test uh, alias. So it picks, because it picks up the, um, it runs a little uh, in-memory database called H2. Uh, and so that's defined in this uh, in this alias of tests. So I'm just adding that to the script. Um, so it's uh, having a, a local Coucher thing. Just make sure that everybody uh, who downloads a project is using Coucher is running it in the same in the same way. So it's uh, it's having uh, a Coucher script that uh, is for all your projects. Then everybody could have different things in that on the team, but having a local one in the project makes sure that it's specifying just exactly how uh, you would run Coucher for this particular project. Uh, uh, and so then if I do boop, 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 um, in capture, so it run the projects and it also runs the profiler, um, which I think makes it take a little bit longer. It works. Um, I thought it wasn't running there. Uh, huh. Let's try it again. Uh, there we go. So Coucher is relatively new. Oh, there we go. That's better. Uh, and so there's lots of active development around this as well. Lots of additional functionality being added to this. Uh, but we see that running it with the profiling and I might have spelled it wrong in the uh, in the configuration. Um, so by adding this extra plugin, we get some extra features from this. So it's it's showing us uh, which things pass and fail, uh, and it's showing the kind of the slowest test to run. So it's showing us the slowest type of uh, from closure tests uh, is this particular one, which is taking 0.8 seconds. Um, and so it's showing us the the different types of tests. So if we've got if our tests are taking a long time to run, then we can go in and start diagnosing. Uh, and we have like we've got a good starting point to kind of figure out why something is taking so long. And so these are the um, these are the good these are the tests that we'd actually go and look at to see if they were actually uh, if they could be optimized or refactored to actually make them run. Uh, faster, assuming there were an issue. I mean, this is this is still pretty fast. But if they were taking uh, seconds or, or like half seconds to to run, then unless they're doing kind of database access uh, across the network, then we'd probably want them to be a bit quicker. But these are these are fine because it's again it's using an in-memory uh, database, so it's it's pretty quick. Um, one strange thing I did notice, I want to have a look at, into that. Actually, it's for some reason this is failing uh, when uh, when I run it with the profiler. But if I run it without the profiler, it seems to uh, seems to be all fine. So I'm not quite sure if the profiler is just adding uh, an extra delay into certain tests than making it fail. Um, it could be that. Uh, uh, but that's something to go and have a look at and experiment with. But there are quite a few plugins to go and uh, look at. Um, let's see. There we go. Whee. There we go. Uh, so we've run the tests. We've run it with plugins. So plugins. So there's profiling. There's uh, there's one to do Cucumber BDD style testing. Uh, there's one for JUnit XML reports, which I assume is mainly there for. A lot of continuous integration servers use uh, a, a XML output from unit tests to display. So when you look at the web page of your CI server, then it's using XML to uh, uh, to display that because uh, yeah, most of them were set up when uh, JUnit was around, and so uh, then it's it's a simple format that any any kind of uh, closure. Uh, test runner can generate 
and pass to a continuation to, and return as for the continuation continuous integration server to display and you get a nice kind of web page of all the all the results so it's uh especially for yeah especially if you're going to plug it into like team city and other uh kind of more traditional uh continuous integration servers then uh, it might be quite important to use as well cool well that just uh touches on culture there's a whole bunch of other things you can do with that and i've been experimenting a bit more with uh, uh what i can do so yeah if if you if you've got a closure depths.eden uh, project then yeah test runner will just work straight away cognitech text lab uh, cognitech labs text runner will run straight away um and so will uh, capture as well i think uh and if you've got a um if you've got a lining and project it's interesting you actually run a lining a project if the so this status monitor is a lining a project and if you've got uh all the tests and and source in kind of the usual places then actually just running coucher as a um a cli tool uh will actually just work but if you want to run the specific lining and tool to run the tests then you would add this uh, coucher dependencies uh in to include uh coucher as a library inside your uh, inside your project.clj file for li uh, lining in and then you can add an alias here as well so you just basically add this to the project configuration and then you can run uh lining and coucher as the uh as the alias so you're defining this alias here uh coucher uh, and then it's using with profile coucher so it takes this coucher uh, profile and then just sets the uh main namespace again so it's kind of doing the same thing but this is how you do it within the context of a lining in thing there as well. So if you wanted to uh, continue using the lining in tool, you can do that with uh, Couch as well. Um, okay, uh, well, that's everything I was going to cover this time round. Uh, and there haven't been any other questions. So I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, so yeah, so unit testing, it's very straightforward enclosure. These are the unit tests, uh, test runners, um, that you can use. So Cognitive Text Lab test runner, very simple and fast. Capture, uh, pretty much full featured one, uh, and, uh, slightly nicer outputs there as well. Um, and you can do, yeah, there's lots of plugins. I could probably do a whole section, uh, a whole our video on capture uh, as well and there's lots of active development around there as well so uh, feel free to go to uh, lambda island and, uh, and check it all out so there's really good documentation there as well if you go to um, oh there it is yes on the uh, clj doc orgs lambda island uh, for capture there's a lot more things that I haven't actually covered yet. And there's a whole kind of API that you can use there as well. You can run this from the REPL. Uh, so it's very, uh, very extensive, very detailed and uh, very good quality test runner as well. Okay. No more questions. Right. I will leave it there. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me and my continued journey in learning all things closure. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody.